All right. Uh, well, I appreciate you guys watching. Um, this is my first ever YouTube video like this. Um, right now I'm working on a crappy webcam, crappy mic, so just bear with me at some point. If this goes anywhere, I'll get better equipment. Um, all right, so what I'm going to go over today is what I've done anyway for uh, the Wigand keypad uh, utilizing uh, ESP32 uh, with Ethernet. Um, all right, give me a moment, we'll go to the hardware. All right, let's look at the hardware. Um, I do want to start off. Um, for this setup, I've built my own custom PCB. They're absolutely not needed. To be honest, overall, overall this is a fairly simple project. Um, I prefer to design, to design PCBs uh, for my projects. I just think it's more reliable, it's cleaner, um, it's more producible. Uh, down the road, I do plan on selling these kits, um, either the PCB or the full build kit on Etsy, along with a few other projects as well. I'm hoping to have that up and running within uh, you know about six months. Um, that will be slightly different than this. This one right here is actually meant to or designed to use a system, my rack system that I've built. So coming into here, um, we have Ethernet. Uh, the main chip here is a WT. 32-ET01 ESP32. So it's an ESP32 with Ethernet. Um, this project, I prefer Ethernet. Uh, you can use Wi-Fi as well. Um, I will end up selling two kits. One will be for the Ethernet. One will be for the 32. Now, the same setup here applies if you're going to use the ESP32. Um, and there are other several other projects uh, that work with uh, ESP32. 8266. Um, took quite a while to figure this one out. I also do want to state as far as the code wise, um, I wrote the automation part um, as far as the actual custom component that was done by others. I will find that leak and post it as well. That is not my component. All right. So this over here, I mean, overall is fairly basic. We have the ESP32. Um, right here, all we have is a Relay uh, setup. I mean, identical to this. Uh, it's a little bit more bulkier. There's truly no difference between this. I do have capacitors, uh, a few LEDs, obviously. I do have a voltage regulator. That's taking the five volts coming in. It's feeding the, feeding the ESP32 and the relay setup. Um, but if you pipe five volts into this for the ESP32, five volts in for the relay, um, the relay will handle its onboarding itself as far as dropping down to 3.3 volts. Um, this incoming feed is piping in 5 volts and 12 volts. These keypads, for the most part, um, require 12 volts. So with my setup, I just generally like this, 5 volts in, 12 volts in as well. All right. As far as the, key, uh, as far as the keypads, go on Amazon, um, W-E-I-G-A-N. Uh, D. Uh, Wingan, if I'm saying that correctly. Um, there's a whole slew of keypads that I found that do work. I would not necessarily be able to tell you offhand which ones do and which ones don't. Um, you know, you leave a comment below, I'll take a look and see if it's uh, one that I've used in the past. Um, I have used about four or five. So, in this case, tie into the ESP32. And there's a few other options you can, a few other options you can do, but in this case. I'm only using four wires off the keypad. Um, we have red and black, and that's your 12 volt input into the keypad. And then coming out of this, um, typically it's going to be the green and the white, um, and that's just the transmit and receive. So between the keypad and the actual ESP32, you're gonna have three wires connected from the keypad to the ESP32. That's gonna be the white, the green, and the black. It needs a common ground between the two and then coming off the ESP32. So if you used a Wemos uh, D1 Mini ESP32, this would be able to plug right onto that. You would just um, have to add jumpers from the keypad over to the unit or um, solder it. Now I will say, at least with this setup right here, um, I've I've been able to go, you know, I've tested up to about, uh, about 80 feet with no problem between the keypad and ESP32. I've had no issue up to 80 feet. 
Um, I haven't tested anything farther than that. All right. So uh, tags, if you notice, LED, let's see if I can get that in the camera. So LED right here, once again. So then also with this setup, um, I have the contact points right here. This is uh, normally open, normally closed. So I just wire my keypad into this. So as far as the code, <laughs> this is still tied into the house here. <laughs> there will be one moment. I have an automation set up to, to arm the security alarm if one, two, three, four is punched in. So give me a moment, let me change that setup. All right, let's try this again. Um, I had an automation set up where if you typed in one, two, three, four, it actually armed the security system. So I kept, this is still connected to the house. Um, still kept trying to arm the door. So tag works now inside the code. You can adjust how long the relay is engaged for. Now, as far as the code, four, three, two, one, it opens up. Now it's really, you can adjust the digits. Um, it's really designed, you know, if, if your primary code is four digits, you're gonna wanna use four digits, uh, four digits across the board. Um, you can somewhat change that. The only difference is, say I, had, say I set it up for eight digits, and then you have somebody that has a six digit code. After they hit the six digit, you would have to hit enter to push it through. Um, so having, you know, whatever si uh, sign number of digits you assign to it, does make it helpful. That way it opens immediately without having to hit enter. Um, now hit them really quick. Then that's the other benefit. Let's see if I hit three. See, it doesn't go through. Hit, hit clear or it'll clear itself after I think 15, oh, 15 seconds. Enter clear. Works just fine. All right. I stop the video and go over the. All right, uh, so we're going to go over um, the wiring for this. So first thing you're going to do is you're going to run 12 volts to your keypad. Uh, you utilize the red and the black wire. They should be labeled. Uh, please validate that your keypad is 12 volts. In most cases, they are. I don't believe I've actually seen a keypad that is not 12 volts. But please, however, I'll verify that. Um, you're gonna bring five volts into your ESP32 and uh, power and ground, five volts into your relay, power and ground. Uh, please note that the ground between the ESP32, the relay and the keypad all need to share the same common ground. So that ground um, from the 12 volt power source and the five volt power source, the ground on both of those are gonna end up being connected together. And in return, it's gonna connect all three of these together uh, with the ground. So now that that's out of the way, you're going to come off of GPOI2 on your ESP32, and that is going to be the trigger uh, to, the, to the relay. Now, connecting the keypad to the ESP32, um, typically they are labeled as D0 and D1. It is typically a white and green wire. Um, please note, I think, you know, one out of four keypads I did, it seems like the clarity is, is swapped. So I didn't label it in this. Um, hook them up. If it, it go ahead and type in a code, look in your, uh, your logs. If it comes out jumbled around and doesn't seem to make sense, go ahead and swap the polarity and you should see that code come out exactly how you type it. Um, all right, simple enough. Do you have any other questions for this part? Now, please leave in the comments. Um, all right, so the first thing you're gonna do is in my well, link down below for my GitHub page. Um, it, it, <laughs> for the keypad, you're gonna find uh, YAML for the keypad and the YAML that says secrets. You're gonna copy and paste everything, which is this right here. You're gonna copy and paste um, this from that file and add it to yours. Um, go through and add the user. Now for the first user, you can have one code and two tags. Um, for the other two, yeah, that's the X. <laughs> uh, 
Um, for the other two, that no longer works. Use your code. Uh, for the other, uh, oh, sorry, other three users, uh, you get one code, one tag. Now you can copy and paste this and uh, change this as many times as you would like. Um, just what was all said and done seemed to be what was best for me. All right. Um, this is the YAML. Uh, the main, for the most part, the only thing you're going to mess with is this right here. Um, so this right here, ESP name, if you're familiar with ESP home whatsoever, you need to make sure that this right here corresponds to, to your name up here. About the period, right here. Um, keypad name, go ahead and name this however you would like. Uh, this is going to be your identifier. It's going to uh, label the tags when the tag is scanned, when the user is added and whatnot, um, and for the connected status, that status of it, excuse me. Um, relay timeout. Pretty simple. Uh, that's how long the relay is engaged. Um, as far as inverted state, um, you can change this. In most cases, you shouldn't have to. Um, what I would suggest in my case, uh, for example, for, for my bedroom door, um, that spends 80% 80, 80 of the time unlocked. Um, so I changed it to, to true. Um, it keeps the door unlocked. And then at nighttime, it locks. And then the relay engages. That just kind of keeps the engage, uh, engage time of that relay down, extends the life of it. Uh, relay pin, that's just the, the pin that the trigger is tied to. So I do apologize, that wasn't pin two, that was uh, GPOI 12. So you can change it in here if you'd like. Um, this is where you would enter your password for your API. You definitely want a password on the API for this. Um, for the alarm name, um, this is if you utilize the, the alarm inside of Home Assist, um, this Home Assistant, this will arm and disarm the alarm um, automatically. Alarm code, this is going to be your disarm code for your alarm. Um, let's see, this line right here just simply includes the secrets that you had before. Uh, in theory, you, know, you could get rid of this line copy and paste from the secrets directly into this and edit, edit it that way. Um, I like it with secrets because if you have multiple keypads, um, you can update the codes on them all at once. Now, please note, I did not create this external component. Um, I put his name in my GitHub page, um, giving him credit for this. Um, you know, very thankful that he took the time to put together this component. Um, the only portion of this that was my own, for the most part, was this right here. Um, all this does is this takes and compares to the code that is entered or the tag that is scanned, compares it to your user codes. If, if they compare and they equal whatever code you have, it will send a uh, tag scanned event to Home Assistant. It will include the user name and the keypad name and then tag. Um, after that, it will go ahead and turn on all triggers. All triggers is down below. What it's going to do, it's going to disarm the alarm. It's going to uh, trigger the relay, time out after the relay is done, and then turn the relay off and then resets. Now, please note there are two binary sensors here. The first one is a status, um, which I'll show you in a moment. The second one is, is if you don't want the actual relay itself exposed to Home Assistant, you can go ahead and pull this out. It won't be exposed. Um, myself, I, I like to have it in there. Uh, reason for that is I added a locked template in Home Assistant, and I can lock and unlock uh, my doors through Home Assistant this way. Here's the uh, connected status for the other keypads that I have. So, I appreciate you watching. Once again, I apologize for the quality of the audio, and I just tend to run on. If you have any questions, please leave them.